Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, buenos dias, buenos tardes, buenos noches, whenever you do get to watch this video. I hope you enjoy it. Well, today we are going to show you the fall update of our backyard orchard. And I don't know where to start because there's a lot to show you. So I was thinking, well, let's just start where we always start. Right in the middle. All right, let's go check things out. We got a lot to show you today. I just sat the baby down for a nap, so I figured I can squeeze in a quick video. Quick as a relative term around here, but we will get this in. Uh, why am I making this video? Well, I just wanted to show you how easy it is to grow your own fruit and vegetables in your backyard in a suburban neighborhood in the Sonoran Desert of Arizona. Believe it or not, you can do it. And I want to show you what we've done so far this season. We are in January. This is our January vlog. And I just wanted to show you our, uh, our updates on how everything's growing. So let's get to it. So technically we are in winter, but because we're in such a warm climate, our fall is right now. This is January, 2022. And as you can see, our grapevines are finally, finally starting to go to sleep. This is the Thompson seedless. And this vine actually is gonna be taken out completely. It uh, is very susceptible to leaf hoppers. Uh, they can also call it skeletonizers, and you can kind of see all the spots here. Of, this is just the damage from the leaf hoppers, and you can kind of see almost all of these leaves have that damage. So we want to we want to pull this thing up, and it also the other reason why we want to pull this thing up is because it does not give us any fruit. This is about five years old, and we've never had any fruit on it, so. Uh, it's nice. It's big and it grows long, but we just don't want uh, We don't want non-producing plants. So this is our Thompson seedless right next to it Down in here is our red flame grape and we are propagating it right now We've planted it in this pot And we're keeping the the vine moist underneath and hopefully some of these nodes that are buried down inside will spr sprout out some roots so we can have another red flame. And we were thinking about planting it right next to where the Thompson seedless grapevine is right now. So we're planning on doing some rearranging in the springtime. And you can see the other grapevine right there. That is also a Zinfandel, red Zinfandel. We do get grapes off of that. In fact, you can see the bird damage from in the springtime and the summer where these ripen in the summertime, about June. They are big, plump, juicy, full-bodied grapes, and they are delicious. You can see some of the other bird damage here. We just, these were covered up in all the leaves and we were just weren't able to see anything. Down over here, we've got two brand new Thompson seedless grapes. They are the green variety, and this was the first year planted, and you can see they did really well in the ground directly. They handled the summer pretty well. They still get leaf hoppers. You can see there, not as bad, not as prolific as the older vine, um, but we are crossing our fingers for some grapes of the season out of these two Thompson seedless. There's the root stalks there, and uh, they are on drip irrigation right there. That thing spurts out probably 10 gallons an hour, so they get plenty watered. And of course, we've got Debbie again following me through the uh, the orchard. Here's another view of it. Of course, we got all of our gardening equipment back in here. Excuse us for the mess. But you can see everything's finally falling asleep. We've also propagated this vine as well. Again, uh, what I did was I clipped parts of it with pruners and let's go show you what happened after I did that. We've got our grapevine test right here. And it looks like one survived, which I'm super happy about. This is the red flame grape. And you can see the green on it. Where I literally just clipped the branch of it off the vine itself and dipped it in some rooting hormone powder and then just straight dropped it in the ground. And we've just been watering it, keeping the, the moisture level up. And we did three of them here. 
Uh, we had one here, another one here, and then of course that one there, and that one looks like it finally took. So that's a pretty good percentage of success on my first try. Uh, we're happy about that. In fact, you can kind of see the little little node right there, a little bud. That is cool to see. So we definitely do have roots down in there. And we'll see what happens in the springtime. So back here in the corner all alone is our Tropic Sweet Apple. And we are in the middle of January. And it's just now finally starting to go dormant. But that is a beautiful fall color display. And we we're really happy about that. When we planted it here, this was uh, the fall, October. Uh, it had really hadn't grown too much. Um, you can see a little bit of new growth, some of these fatter leaves. But what I'm thinking is, these are all fruiting spurs. I could be wrong, but I think that's why this thing didn't grow another foot or two, is because these were developing all of the fruiting spurs. So we'll find that out in the springtime, if this thing's just gonna be covered in flowers. We're hoping so. We've been getting quite a few chill hours now in our backyard. And that's what's putting this thing to sleep. It's a very young tree, but it is ready to produce fruit. Hopefully, crossing our fingers. But that's our Tropic Sweet Apple. And we've got a white Pakistan mulberry. Not too sure if it is a female or a male. I did get it from a backyard, my parents' house actually. And it was planted by a bird, if you know what I mean. Uh, but it has finally gone dormant. And it's got all these little buds on it. I'm not too sure, like I said, if it's female or male. If it's a male and we don't get any flowers or any fruit uh, within probably the next couple of years, we will get rid of it one way or another. Either give it to a friend that wants a large leafed shade tree. Incredible growth on these mulberries. Uh, that one's falling asleep finally also. And you can see it's mixed in with some pepper plants. And we're waiting for those to turn some colors too so we can finally eat those peppers. Right next to our little grapevine experiment is, if you saw in the other video, I'll leave the link in the description. This was our Waddell pear that we planted, very young tree, but you can see the beautiful red display of fall colors. It's finally going dormant as well. Like I said, we we're get, finally getting our chill hours. A little late in the season, but we're definitely getting the chill hours and that is evident in our pear trees. And I can't wait for these to become a full-size tree. Can you imagine this whole area just blazing red and orange? Hopefully, if all goes well, these will take off in the springtime. All right, here's our Katie apricot. That's our fall flush. This is where we bought the tree. And this is all after we planted it and finally took off. That's all new growth, so I don't expect any of that to fall off. In fact, we can start pulling some of these leaves and get it uh, to accelerate the chill hours. And I am doing a graft experiment here as well. It actually looks really good. I grafted it here, uh, a branch broke off while I was doing some trimming, and so I, I wanted to put it back on this side of the tree. And we're grafting it, and hopefully it will take off. It actually looks really good. It's not dried out and it's still got some green wood on it. And that is probably about three weeks old now. So I think that took. We'll see what happens in the springtime, but that's our Katie apricot. And that is full of flower buds, just hundreds of them. Those are all flower buds. So we're expecting this to maybe give us a fruit or more. That's our Katie apricot. Megami kumquat. We just had one of these yesterday afternoon. And they are delicious. The unique part of these little guys is the skin. It's like opposite. So the skin is sweet, if you can imagine. But it also has those orange oils. So you're getting a blast of flavor. And then the inside, the meat part, is tart. And I ate one of these yesterday. And man, they are delicious. I can't wait until this thing grows triples, quadruples in size. This is just the first first year in the ground. We've got it in the pot. And that pot, of course, you know me, it's full of worms. So this is gonna help aerate and fertilize and get those roots nice and strong. And crossing our fingers, this thing takes, and we'll 
start growing in the springtime. Give us new flowers. That's your Nagami kumquat. And of course our desert gold peach. Finally went to sleep. We've had some pretty good wind storms. Mostly at nighttime for some reason. Uh, and of course obviously you can see all the leaves have taken off. You can see here where we didn't get all the peaches last year. They were all small because we didn't thin them out. Oh, Debbie almost died. Oh, she's going after a lizard. Get him. So we're gonna prune this pretty heavily. We're gonna take out some of these larger branches that are above the fence height. And then of course we'll prune all the, the non-fruiting wood. And we'll thin this thing out. And that'll be the first real true pruning of our desert gold peach. And that will definitely help vigor fruit production, fruit flavor, fruit size. Pruning is just nothing but good. And we'll get you a video on when we do that very shortly before this thing starts budding out. Uh, maybe the end of this month, maybe early February. Just depends depending on weather. It's always depending on the weather. That's our desert gold peach in dormancy. So down here, you've also seen this tree in the last few videos. This is our Red Baron peach. And it is, I think, just one year younger than our desert gold. But it's only three feet tall. And learning as you go, uh, I packed up too much mulch against the rootstock. And you can see clearly it's blackened out and rotted. Uh, I don't know how much actual contact of uh, the rootstock is to the graft, but you can see the graft right there. Um, it's not going to support much life. Uh, you can see it's still still alive, finally going dormant. But I want to graft. I want to graft a few of these branches. That Katie apricot's kind of an experiment to see how well that grafting technique works. But I do want to take some of these younger branches, and I want to graft these onto our desert gold. And so we'll have a Red Baron Desert Gold two-in-one combo. So stay tuned for that. That should be exciting. But regardless, this little guy's got to go. We're going to try to make it better. Uh, we are going to replace it with, right next to, still in the pot, dormant. This is our Florida Prince. They are known for heavy fruit loads and aggressive growth. And you can see all the fruiting buds already. And we are getting our chill hours. And this thing is fully dormant. Look at all these fruit buds everywhere on this thing. We're not going to prune it. We're just going to let it grow. We may let it do a couple fruit here and there, but we're not going to let it fruit entirely. We want it to encourage growth, upward growth this year. Fruiting on these trees takes a lot of energy. We want to focus that energy on growth for the overall health of the tree. And that is our Florida Prince. Right next to it, it's already in the ground. This is our Golden Dorset. It's just starting to fall asleep. I'm fine with that. We can always take some of these leaves out and encourage it to go even more dormant. But this one's ready to go also. This is the Golden Dorset, Dorset Golden, however you want to call it. I've seen it both ways. But we did prune it in the springtime. I'm sorry, in the fall when we bought it and we planted it and it shot out all this new growth. You can see the considerable different size of these leaves. It definitely took root. Here's your nursery leaves, and then this is after we planted it. So it is getting full nutrient uptake. We're just waiting for it to go dormant as well. That's our golden door set. So here's the after effect of our basil pruning. Literally a week after we finally got our first frost and you can see all the spots on it. These are all little weakened, weakened leaves, but the rest of it is still looking good. What I did was I covered up with a towel because I knew we were gonna get some frost that night. We did get down into the 20s, and that's a hard frost. That's a hard freeze. Uh, so that covering it definitely kept it awake. The basil likes warm. These can do full strength summertime sun in July in Arizona, no problem, but they do not like the cold as you can see there. But the basil took that pruning very well. Really happy about that. And here's our sweet lemon. In our previous videos, I was calling it the Meyer lemon. It is not a Meyer lemon. 
we found the tag buried in the dirt and it's a Pomona sweet lemon. Zoom in on that real quick. Pomona sweet lemon. Cool. Good to know. We just pulled our first one today. We've got six lemons from last year. From last growing season. We've got six lemons that were successfully ripened. We're really happy about that. But you can see all this extra growth. All these tips are all going to push out flowers in the springtime. And man, this thing... I'm crossing my fingers, but if I did my math right, I'm expecting maybe 100 fruit this next season. This will be the fourth year in the ground. And it is fully mature. It is a dwarf version, but clearly you can see that's pushing the 8-foot, almost 10-foot mark. And right next to it, well, like I keep saying, they said you can't do it, but we're doing it. It is the Honeycrisp Apple in Arizona. This is a Midwestern, upper Midwestern, like Northwoods type apple tree. It needs three to 500 plus chill hours, but it's got a lot of fruiting spurs on it. And we're crossing our fingers that it does give us something at a, at least one apple, and then we can call it a full success. But it's a beautiful tree. It's doing well. It's finally starting to go dormant. All these little leaves are falling finally fallen off. We can increase chill hours with plucking those off. But that's our honey crisp apple right next to the Pomona sweet lemon. And our plum trees finally going dormant as well. Santa Rosa plum. You can see the fall colors are just starting. We'll make a video on uh, taking some of these leaves out and that'll increase the chill hours and dormancy length. And you can see the fresh growth on there. There's Daisy. Hi Daisy. This is all our fresh fall growth, fall flush. This is where we bought the tree. And then this is after planting it and you can see it grew probably two feet. It uh, looks like it's going to be a very aggressive growing the Santa Rosa plum. Back in here are our, our two guavas. This is our pineapple guava and strawberry guava. And this is the third year as well, fourth season growing. And it's got all this fresh growth. It's handling the frost really well. We did not cover it. And there's no frost damage. So that's good. So these will pollinate each other. Guavas are not self-pollinators. That's why we've got two right next to each other. It's your guava growing in Arizona. And of course our fig this is our common fig. We are going to prune this bad boy when it finally goes dormant. It is starting the process of its fall colors. Very aggressive growers. This is the second year and it's finally fully mature. We are going to prune it like I said and we are going to plant some of the prunings. That darker wood we're going to plant in the ground. And figs are one of the most popular around the world to propagate. You literally clip the branch and you stick it in the ground. And it'll take off on you if you do everything right, keeping it wet and all that good stuff. But that's our common fig. And so right next to our fig tree is our wonderful pomegranate tree. And look where we're growing this thing, right next to our air conditioner. Okay, so you can grow anything. You can grow anything in your backyard, I'm telling you. Um, this is a very sunny spot. This is a center, su southern exposure uh, corner. And the... Wonderful pomegranates do actually enjoy our summertime heat. Um, they also enjoy a little bit of intermittent watering versus regular watering. So we can water this thing probably just once a week during the summertime. Uh, nice deep watering. We do have it on drip irrigation, but we can get away with that. During the winter time, we don't wa deep water anymore because we want these trees to go dormant like they're doing right now. When you stop watering your trees, that actually tells the tree that okay we need to preserve our nutrients and so it'll start sucking back all the nutrients and the sap back into the trunk and that's that's why we're losing our colors uh, they're not they're dying but they're not dead they're pulling the nutrients back into the core of the tree and down into the roots and then when things start warming back up that tells hey we're springtime we can start growing again um, and that's when you get your your leaf pop and your, your hopefully flowers and fruit. So that's how all that works. Um, like I mentioned, we do deep water our orchard during the summertime at least once a week. 
and each tree will get a significant amount of water once a week and then like I said we do have our drip irrigation all throughout we don't have it right underneath the trees because we don't we don't want to encourage the roots to be in one spot we want them to grow out and be just like one big network of roots throughout the orchard we've got seven trees in this little corner so let's go out front and show you what this tree is so in our front doorway area we do have this nice rosemary bush and you can see it's just covered in bees right now and they are just going crazy here we get a close up there you go just pollinate we don't really get any seeds off of these things but we do enjoy the fragrance uh, and also the security too so we uh, put all our FedEx boxes there you can see all the bees in here pollinating going crazy we do enjoy this rosemary here as a nice hedge and fragrance especially when it gets rained on oh my goodness and just touching it releases the oils oh man grow rosemary by your front door you won't be disappointed and this is our dapple dandy pluot we are really excited about this one it's just just starting to get some fall color uh, so it is finally going dormant and it's finally starting to react to that you can see all these these leaves here they're just plopping right off uh, this is about a seven foot tall tree i'm six foot tall and this thing is way over my head um, we're gonna let it grow like crazy in the springtime we're gonna water it heavily we've got of course worms in here and using our uh, homemade compost and organic mulch and that's just going to encourage all the microbody activity uh, so this is our dappled dandy pluot and we are expecting maybe some fruit we'll see how it goes they are supposed to be a heavy producer of fruit and we are of course every grower is looking forward to that so that's your dappled dandy pluot growing here in the desert southwest of arizona and our last kind of a it's not really a fruit tree obviously but it does give us food this is our moringa tree and you can see all the flowers on here it is a delicious tree these leaves complement any salad you just take them off and you pop them in your mouth just like that and a little peppery uh, this time of the year they're not bad um, we are in our winter right now so they're not as flavorful but man they are delicious looks like it needs to be watered too um, they do require uh, they do require watering even though some people say you don't have to water them when they're fully established uh, but we do see better results when we do water we do water it heavily um, this is also a little bit of winter dieback they do go they don't like the cold temperatures so they do get a little a uh, little less color and a little less vibrant we we had one frost and you can see when they're this big and this old uh, it's about a three-year-old tree yeah three-year-old does handle the cold a lot better than your uh, brand new trees so when they're new you got to protect them but when they're old like this real old is a relative term they do handle the frost very well we have had our low temperatures in the 20s uh, starting christmas 2022 2021 we finally started getting our chill hours and we've been getting chill hours every single night ever since Christmas so a little late in the season but we are definitely getting our chill hours this is our moringa tree we do have future plans to be expanding our orchard we're going to be planting more grapes in the springtime we are looking forward to that we're also going to be doing some grafting on some of our fruit trees we'd like to have two in one three in one and if we're feeling frisky get four in one on one tree stock uh, stay tuned for all that. That's all going to be a learning process to see how successful or unsuccessful we can be propagating our own fruit trees. We do create these videos to show you how easy it is to grow your own fruit and vegetables in your backyard organically. Super simple. Very inexpensive too, so you're not using any chemicals. You're just letting the worms do their job. That is the key secret of organic gardening, microbody activity. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you learned anything, give it a like. Please subscribe to our channel. We are trying to help grow this channel. Uh, comment on anything you've seen, any suggestions. Uh, we do appreciate all of that. So from my family to yours, thanks for watching.